What's up AC family? Welcome to another video. This is Ans Canada here and as you can see I'm not in the ant room um, like usual. I'm actually here in New York City um, and I am currently at the American Museum of Natural History. Now I wanted to check out this place because here in their new wing they've got an insectarium and in the insectarium I heard that they have two very cool ant setups of two very cool ant species so I'm going to check out those setups now talk a little bit about those ants and take you guys along I'm so excited so stay tuned all right so this insectarium has a really cool layout we've got live ants in terrariums we've got preserved ants in cases we've also got displays hey awesome weaver ants on screen but let's see if we can find the formicaria the ant farms here we are ants bees and wasps oh here we are guys so this is the first species of ant that i wanted to show you guys this here is a setup of the very famous myrmecocystis ants aka honeypot ants and I love their setup here they've got an outworld at the top and then they have their nest at the bottom now before we check out the nest at the bottom let's have a look at their outworld so in ant keeping they call the outworld the outworld because it's their outer world so the area where the ants can forage gather food and drink and hunt as well as dump their garbage and dead bodies now it looks like they've got a bottle cap of honey and apple here and you can see the workers wandering around now foraging for food. They've also got a little tower of honey here and it looks like there is the entrance to their nest. See you guys? That is awesome. These ants are great. Now I'm gonna go down into the nest now. You might notice the upper part the outworld is designed like almost like an arid desert habitat that's because these ants are from more arid climates and the reason why they're called honeypot ants is because do you see those round balls those are called repletes those are actual worker ants oh wow look at they're all over the top as well see them and they're living stores for food they're just full of liquefied food and they dispense it slowly as the colony needs. Now because they live in arid areas, there are periods of the year where there isn't enough food for the colony. So what they'll do is they'll gorge and eat as much as they can and then fill up these repletes full of food. Isn't that incredible? Wow. I love it. There are so many repletes here. What a setup. Sadly, um, these honeypot ants have never been native to where I've lived, so I've never been able to keep them. But they are super cool. Look at how huge they can get. Isn't that amazing? Wow. There's the brood. You can see right there all those babies. That looks like a hydration platform. Lots of babies there. And I was looking around for the queen. And there she is. Do you see her? She's right there. Awesome. Guys, sorry about the, um, the flickering you see on screen. It's uh, due to the lighting that they've used for the setup. But you guys can, you guys get the point. Oh, and there, there's a worker feeding her right now through trophallaxis. That's mouth-to-mouth -mouth food transfer that social insects do to uh, distribute food throughout the colony. Here you can see dead crickets. That's the protein source that they feed the ants here in the museum. And wow, they're even placing larvae on the dead crickets to feed. How neat. This here is a very, very impressive colony. How I would love, love to keep Myrmecocystis ants. Um, but sadly, again, they're not native to where I live. Um, but carpenter ants have uh, repletes as well, not as profound as these repletes, but they have workers that are fed a bunch of food and they, they blow up like a balloon. So, and I have a few carpenter ants and colonies coming up in the ant room. 
so hopefully we get to see some repletes. But very, very cool colony. All right, AC family, let's go see the other ant colony that I was looking for. Here we go, guys. Oh, man. I have done videos on these kinds of ants before. This here is a total goals setup um, as far as ant keeping goes. This is the leaf cutter ant exhibit here at the museum. And it looks like this area is where they keep all the plants. Let's see. Now this is a cool take on the leaf cutter ant setup because usually they're displayed in more naturalistic setups like a terrarium that looks like a jungle. But in this case, they're actually growing the plants hydroponically it looks like. And then there's a moving moat that keeps the ants on this island. I don't see that many leaf cutter ants currently. I just see a few, like see them? See that small one scurrying there? But I'm guessing it's because it's fall now here in New York and the, the ants are probably going into a hibernation sort of phase. That's my guess. Now, what is this here? Wow, this is a pretty, <laughs> pretty interesting setup. Okay, um, I'm guessing this just allows the ants to wander through here. Okay, it's, it makes for interesting obser observation. Oh, I see what they're doing here. Okay, so AC family, get this. They come to this area to clip pieces of foliage, um, and then they climb. Th they start climbing this jungle gym area. They have to travel all this way, up and down, see? So the ants really have kind of a far distance to travel to go back to the nest, which is kind of what the ants have to do in the wild. They've got a often forage far distances away from the nest to harvest their pieces of foliage. Um, and I'll talk about what they use those foliage for in a bit, you see. Then they crawl across this platform here, all the way here, see? All the way down here, through here, across this platform here, all the way here, and then up this sort of bar here to the top. And then once they're at the top, they travel all the way across here. Wow. This setup really maximizes the viewing and observation for their you know, behavior of carrying pieces of leaves back to their nest. They crawl across here, all oh, upside down. See that ant carrying a piece of leaf? I'm sure when the colony is very active and there are lots of ants across this highway, it's very impressive. So they crawl across here, all the way here, and then down this metal path, and then into their nest. Whoa guys, check out this nest! What a cool take of the leaf cutter ant setup. Isn't that amazing? Like this isn't by any means a naturalistic setup but still a cool setup nonetheless for those of you who are new to leaf cutter ants what they do is they cut pieces of leaves from foliage they bring those pieces of leaves back to their nest which is usually underground and in the chambers underground they chew up the leaves and then they create these sort of like a mash and from the mash grows a fungus that they eat. So all these ants are actually fungus. They're fungivores. They eat this special fungus that they farm from pieces of leaves that they chew up. It's really incredible. And they have these massive, very impressive fungus comb structures. You see? The ants are very, very skilled at growing this fungus. Now, what's amazing is this fungus is found nowhere else in nature except in the nests of these leafcutter ants. So this species of fungus and the ants have a mutualistic symbiotic relationship. They can't exist in nature without each other, which is very interesting. And what's even more interesting is that just like human farmers, these ants actually have to worry about a weed fungus that attacks their edible fungus. 
The ants routinely have to kill this weed fungus. And guys, get this. In order to kill the weed fungus, they each on their head have a special patch on which live Actinomyces bacteria. And the bacteria on this patch on their head produces almost like a, an antibiotic sort of like chemical that kills the weed fungus. Isn't that amazing? So the bacteria in their heads and the ants and the fungus actually have a, a symbiotic relationship all together. It's really complex these how the systems of you know these leaf cutter ants actually work. And it's amazing how they've really designed this setup. I'm really impressed. Now it looks like some of the chambers are empty and they're just starting. Like see that one right there? That fungus ball is just starting. Um, and that will fill up over time. See? Ooh, what a what an interesting take on the leaf cutter ant setup. I love this so much. It looks like the chambers start off with a little bit of soil. I guess the people at the museum maybe place soil in there. Uh, some moistened substrate so that the ants start deciding to create a fungus comb in there. And if I were to guess, the queen is in this chamber. Look how big that chamber is. That's one big fungus ball. Um, now in other museum leaf cutter ant setups that I've been to, the, uh, cura the curators or the myrmecologists or resident entomologists have told me that the queen will move from chamber to chamber just depending on, you know, where she wants to go based on conditions of, you know, humidity, heat, whatnot. So I'm guessing it's probably the same. But if I were to guess, the queen would be in here. Now these leaf cutter ants are polymorphic which means they have workers of different sizes. Like if you look carefully, you'll see some workers are really large, with big heads. Those are the majors. And then some are really small, the minors. And there's the queen. Look how big she is. She is so much larger than the workers. Like see how much larger she is than her kids? It's just incredible. And they crawl all over her protecting her and you know helping her along and although it doesn't look like the colony is completely active currently again probably because of the time of the year I'm sure in the summertime when the ants are all traveling across this path and all across there this setup looks really really cool for all of these guests you know what I would love to create a massive setup like this Maybe not for leafcutter ants because leafcutter ants also do not exist where I live. Um, but maybe for weaver ants, which do exist where I live. We'll see. But this is definitely inspiring and super duper cool. So guys, tell me, which of the two exhibits did you like the most? Did you like the leafcutter ant exhibit or did you like this honeypot ant exhibit more? Smaller, but equally as cool. Let me know in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. And guys, actually the reason why I'm here in the US is because tomorrow, uh, that's Sunday, October the 22nd, I'm actually having an Ants Canada meet and greet in New Jersey. Um, and so if you are, are watching before, well, Sunday, October 22nd, um, you can even actually sign up for tickets on October 22nd, on the Sunday, uh, by visiting thearchild.com. By all means, go. I'd love to meet you. Um, I believe you can also get tickets at the door, but you will still need to sign up through the website at thearchild.com. All right, guys. Thank you so much and keep up all that ant love. If you guys would like to see these exhibits in person, again, it's here in New York City at the American Museum of Natural History. This is Ants Canada signing out. It's ant love forever.